Welcome to another part of Celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. Today, I have with us Miss Maria Vega. But Maria, you've got to tell me a little bit of history behind the name. Um, yes, well, good morning, Vicki. Thank you for having us, or having me. Um, my name, well, my legal name is Maria de los Milagros Vega Garcia. So imagine writing that name on a piece of paper in kindergarten. You literally have to start on the left side of the page and work your way over and back down. Um, so fast forward 10 years, we live, we leave Hawaii, uh, Puerto Rico to move to Hawaii and um, no one can pronounce Milagros, which is what I was called and referred to in Puerto Rico. And um, I quickly learned that I did not like my name being butchered. So I really didn't have a choice, and that's when I became Maria. And um, then I uh, joined the, the service, and it was too long. So I became Maria Vega, and then I became A.D. Vega, Miss Vega, and now Miss V. So um, I'm down to three letters now. So it's, it's, working. it's working. From well. a page and a half to three letters. Well, yes, ma'am. Good job. Good yes. job. So you mentioned Puerto Rico. Is that actually where you were born? Yes, ma'am. I was born in Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And when did you move to Hawaii? I was uh, 10 years old, so I w it was in 1978. Oh, wow. I just okay. gave my age away. Very proud of that, so no worries. So you've got some different uh, traditions al along your life, but tell me your favorite um, Hispanic tradition. My, I think my favorite Hispanic tradition um, is Dia de los Reyes, Three Kings Day. Um, well, as a kid, you get more presents. So it's interesting because in Puerto Rico, we adapt Christmas and Three Kings. Okay. And so at least in my household, the better presents were given to you on Three Kings Day. And so I remember that. Moving to Hawaii was a different experience, um, not so well financially stable. So uh, we had to take one of those holidays away. So being in a place where it was not very uh, prominent with Hispanic and Latinos, Puerto Ricans, um, Three Kings kind of faded away in the background, but Christmas was still celebrated. So it was just a little bit of that. But I remember as a little girl going to, um, you know, back of, of the house, picking up some grass for the camels that will come and bring the Three Kings on January 5th. Oh, so right. yeah, I remember that. Kind of, a, kind of a blending of traditions now, yes, I guess. So food. Yes, ma'am. What's your favorite Hispanic food? <laughs> I don't have just one, but um, I, I can narrow it down to two. Okay. And that will be pasteles and uh, pernil, or um, you know, roasted pork. Okay. Yes. Okay. Elaborate. It sounds wonderful. What what's okay. in it? Um, so, do you know what a tamale is? Yes. Okay. Well, a pasteles is similar, but is made out of banana. Shred, uh, a grated banana, and then it has diced pork and sometimes olives, and it is is kind of stewed, and then is wrapped in a banana leaf and, and paper, unlike the tamale, which is in a corn husk and is steamed, and then is opened up and you you eat it. So it's very is very good, very tasty, and generally we eat that over the holidays. But if you're like me, anytime you can get your hands on it, you'll eat it. Now, do you make it yourself? I don't make it myself, but I do remember going back to when I was a little girl, it was a production and in our um, garage, my grandmother used to set out a table and she had stations. And somebody had the um, job of putting the banana peel and then that moved over and then someone put the masa or the, the filling and then someone put the meat. Uh, my job was the olives. Okay. But I got fired because I used to eat all the olives. <laughs> but I was also like six or seven. Then, so you got fired off the assembly line. I was fired off the assembly line because I was eating more than I could put inside the pastel. <laughs> but I, I cherish those things because it's things I remember because it was all family oriented. And it was all in preparation for, you know, Navidad, which is Christmas, or Dia de los Reyes, Three Kings Day. It's something what we remember from our childhood. Absolutely. And you being fired for the olives. Yes. <laughs> uh, tell me something uh, about your culture that oh, just makes you really proud. What makes me really proud is being raised by a single parent and uh, my grandmother. So I was raised by my grandmother and my mother. And um, 
I think it was necessity that made her instill such discipline with me uh, or in me. Um, I don't think she meant to be as strict as she, she was. And as a young girl, you don't understand why, why, why. Seeing it now, she was leading a path for me to be able to stand on my own, be independent, and be able to succeed and, and uh, survive. And um, you don't appreciate that as a young girl, but as an adult, you, you do. And I'm very thankful for that. And it's no surprise that I ended up in the line of work that I do today. Well, that, that kind of rolls into the cultural value that, so that is the cultural value that you've cherished most from your, from your childhood. To, to Being raised by, by two very strong women who gave me everything from learning how to walk to how to just. So not only as an inspiration, but, oh, but life skills. Absolutely. As well. Uh, it seems like you've done a lot of traveling and seen and done a lot of things. Yes, ma'am. And then here you are here at Fletzy. Yes, ma'am. What is the one thing that you like the best about working here at Fletzy? Um, I have been um, blessed by being a, a staff member of the CBP Field Operations Academy. I am now an assistant director with Use of Force. Um, I have had the experience of working with Fletzy and seeing it not just necessarily as Fletzy and CBP, but seeing it as part of a family. And I really got to see that more so over the last two years when we were unfortunate with Hurricane Matthew and then Irma, um, where it did really not matter who we represented. It was more about coming together working together to bring the installation back to where it needed to be so we could open our doors and start training once again. And that um, just made it that much better and that much more special uh, working here. But it's always a great day here. Um, there's always someone that's willing to help you if you don't know. And um, if you're not having a great day here, something's wrong. <laughs> Somebody will help make it a great day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Maria, or the lady known by such many names, <laughs> thank you again for helping us to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. My pleasure. Thank you.